Now, wine's been around since 1993, but Proton, Valve's collection of wine and a bunch of other tools for Linux gaming, that first released in August of 2018. This year is going to be the seventh anniversary of Proton. Maybe even crazier though, the Steam Deck. In February of this year, past its third year anniversary, being released back in 2022. Where did the time go? And I don't know, maybe even crazier, game compatibility numbers on ProtonDB, recommended by at least one person, 25,000 games. By two or more, 15,000. Three or more, 11,000. Now, that is the community numbers. This is always going to be higher because there's just more people testing and the requirements are a lot more sensible. Now, Valve's internal numbers, the Steam Deck playable and verified. 19,000 games are verified or playable. 6,000 marked as Steam Deck verified. Obviously, there are still problems. If we look at the top 10 games, two of them don't work. Why do two of them not work? Well, anti-cheat. Not because the anti-cheat problem isn't solved. The solution is there. They can use it. They don't use it, so it doesn't work. And we have two balked games. But there are so many other games to play that yes, it's annoying, but for me personally, doesn't really bother me. And if the solution we currently have doesn't work, really we'd need some sort of industry agreement on another way to approach it. I could imagine maybe a Valve official kernel that has anti-cheat modules included inside of it, and then if you want to use anti-cheat games, you just have to use the Valve kernel. It's not a great solution. I don't like that it would be the solution. I don't like kernel-level anti-cheat. But if that's what has to happen, it'll at least get the games working. But for most everything else, games just work out of the box. In some cases, it's not straight away. It might be a couple of days later. Maybe you need some like minor changes, a proton update, things like that. But even then, that is the exception. In most cases, I can just buy a game on release day. I start the game. I use whatever version of proton I happen to have available. And it works. Like, no problem whatsoever. I don't think about it. I don't check ProtonDB beforehand. I just buy the game. I play it and it works. Almost like I'm on Windows. I'm not. I'm on Linux. I'm on Arch Linux, by the way. But things work basically perfectly. Minus the anti-cheat games. Those are a problem. Now, I've said it before. I'll say it again. SteamOS on generic hardware is a giant red herring. It is not going to solve anything. Nothing is going to change. If you want the SteamOS experience today, just go and install Bazite. However, we will be seeing a new device ship with SteamOS soon. The Lenovo Legion Go S. And possibly in anticipation of this, or maybe some discussions about possible future devices that could be coming out, that there may be rumours floating around for, I don't actually know, there is an extension to the Steam Deck verified system. Steam OS compatibility. The Steam OS compatibility system covers any device running Steam OS that's not a Steam Deck. They should say officially because there are some people taking the recovery image and then trying to install that on generic hardware. This is something that was shown in the Linus Tech Tips video. As I've said many times before, if you want Steam OS today, stop trying to do that. It's stupid. It's a waste of time. You're going to have a bad experience install Bazite instead. Now it does say currently only the Legion Go S falls under this category. So they're kind of just ignoring all the people doing this with the recovery image, which probably is the best thing to do. On a side tangent, I don't think it ever really makes sense to just generally release SteamOS. Like maybe do it for handhelds, but 
doing it for generic desktop hardware, it is just way too much work for literally zero benefit. Steam OS compatibility ratings are based on a subset of the Steam Deck compatibility testing results and are meant to show at a glance whether a game and all of its middleware is supported on SteamOS. This includes features like game functionality, launch functionality, and anti-cheat support. Now, unlike the Steam Deck rating, there isn't three categories, verified, playable, unsupported. There is only two, compatible and unsupported. If a game and all of its middleware are supported on SteamOS, we will mark it as SteamOS compatible. If not, it's marked as SteamOS unsupported. Please note, this rating does not include testing results for performance and input, since we will not know and have not tested how all titles will run on all potential hardware. Right now that is two cases, but imagine there is like 15 or 20 devices across three or four generations, right? Like this very quickly becomes impossible to manage. We expect over 18,000 titles on Steam to be marked SteamOS compatible out of the gate. Now regarding the anti-cheat support, this actually is a very important one, not just for anti-cheat support, but also because there are cases where <laughs> it's really dumb, but the anti-cheat will work specifically on the Steam Deck but not on general Linux. So people have gone and installed Bazite on the Steam Deck, and some of these games do not work, which is a problem and is something that should absolutely be documented. Steam developers, game developers, don't need to take any additional action. If your title already has a Steam Deck compatibility rating, an automated process will use that data to give it a SteamOS compatibility rating. For titles that have not yet been tested for Steam Deck compatibility, the same queue system applies. So you'll just be added to the testing queue, and then when they get to it, they'll do both scores at once. And we will continue testing new and old titles based on community interest. Once a new title has been tested, both Steam Deck and SteamOS ratings will be generated simultaneously. When this feature is rolled out, Steam SteamOS compatibility results will show up on your partner dashboard next to your Steam Deck compatibility results. Customers running SteamOS on non-Steam Deck devices will see these new ratings show up in the store and in the Steam client. It will look something like this. So Steam Deck is over here, SteamOS is here, this is about Portal 2, it successfully runs on SteamOS, and does it need an internet connection? Wait. Does Portal 2 need an internet connection the first time you run it? Not important at all. Now, due to SteamOS compatibility being a subset of the Steam Deck compatibility, at least to the best of my knowledge, there doesn't appear to be public documentation on exactly what would get you in to be compatible. However, we can base it on those Steam Deck guidelines. So this is the public documentation on the Steam Deck compatibility review process. If we scroll down just a bit to the section on form factor requirements, this is everything you need to do, along with additional other things like entity, things like that, to be marked as verified on the Steam Deck. Now the seamlessness guidelines, those are most likely being included. This is no device compatibility warning, so it shouldn't say, oh, you're on the Steam Deck, you're on this hardware, this is unsupported, things like that. Also with launchers, launchers are allowed, but the launcher must have full controller support. Preferably no launcher, this is my preference, just do it through any other means, have the launcher built into the game, but if it's gonna have one, Controller support is a requirement. Now, display stuff... I don't know, this is gonna be... Text legibility would make sense, because this is about making sure the text is readable on a small screen, and you could have a general range of device sizes and screen resolutions where that would still be, like, you know, making sense. Default configuration is about default settings to give you playable performance on a deck. Obviously wouldn't be a thing with other devices. Resolution support. Again, this is very Steam Deck specific, which is 1280 by 800. I guess you could make this a thing by saying it needs to have just, you know, the standard sort of resolution range. 
text input. Um, this is making sure if there is text input, then you can actually input it using the Steamworks API for an on-screen keyboard. If they're using SteamOS, this is something they're going to have available. So that probably should be part of the criteria. Now, controller glyphs, because the Steam Deck has an Xbox-style layout, some of the devices might have a Nintendo-style layout. They might use different button glyphs. I can see why this one wouldn't be included. Controller support, though, this is something that definitely should be part of their compatibility rating. It, pretty much every one of these handheld devices is effectively going to be a screen glued onto a controller. Now, as an extension of what was already being done, this is a good change to make. Having generic SteamOS compatibility is a good thing. At the same time, though, and I've discussed this before, I do have issues with Valve's compatibility system that I think could very easily be addressed. And this commenter hit it perfectly on the head. I really hope we can fix the system. Verified is really on the toilet at the moment performance wise. Please let us choose after we finish a game, what rating do we give it? Like, ah, it runs flawless, but start movie is just a bit weird. We should be able to give it a verified or playable if a lot of the community believes so. There are so many games getting screwed because of this. Yes, I've looked at the rating on the Steam Deck and it's a game that's like unsupported or it's playable when it very clearly should be verified or worse, when it's marked as verified, I open it and it doesn't open. There's like a different version of Proton I need or they test it with an older version and it worked. Like there's all of these different reasons and I don't think the Valve system is anywhere near as good as it could be. And there is a solution that can make this work well. And it's a solution that already exists. That solution is ProtonDB. Every single game with any sort of level of popularity, any game that Valve would have tested themselves, is going to have report on ProtonDB. Let's just pick some new popular examples. Here we have the latest Doom game. This is Doom the Dark Ages. There was a Mesa bug where the opening movie would be breaking some stuff. You need a very, very new version of Mesa to deal with this. And this is very clearly being documented in ProtonDB. And for this one, it's very important because it's a Denuvo game. So if you try to test a bunch of different versions of Proton, you will actually just be banned because you can be banned from a single player game because of the DRM system. It's great. It's, it's like a 24 hour ban, but even so. Here is another game. This is Expedition 33. And you may want to change a couple of settings, but for the most part, this game runs absolutely perfectly. Like, it seems most of the problems are either really old GPUs or NVIDIA GPUs. Anything else, it's great. Or let's go, a great example, Marvel Rivals, where it seems like every single new season, there is a new option that you need to run to make sure the game actually works correctly. And if you don't include some of these options, the game will just crash. But it is very clearly being documented on... ProtonDB. Now, on the Steam Deck, those settings are automatically being set, and that is how it got the playable rating. I've discussed this before, but I can imagine a system where either it's an integration with ProtonDB, or maybe it's some sort of, like, modification of the current review system, where instead of just having a regular review for a game, where it's like, the game is good, I like the game, the music is good, there could be a compatibility review where, like on ProtonDB, you can say, hey, this worked in the game, this didn't work in the game, I could run these settings, this is my hardware. All of this stuff, which would be important for more than just SteamOS, for more than just the Steam Deck, it could be a general Linux thing. This is why I think it'd be great to be an integration or a partnership with ProtonDB and share this resource, bring all of this amazing information to people on Steam, because most Linux gamers know about this if they've been using Linux for a while. But if you're someone who maybe just bought a Steam Deck and you're normally a Windows user, I could very easily imagine you have no idea this resource exists. And besides the mistakes, I don't think Valve's system is bad. I think there's value in having a very sort of 
surface level look like this works, this doesn't work, this is what to look out for. Like that's still really important to have. And I like that, that is shown directly in the Steam Deck interface. But this isn't a one or the other situation. We can have both things here. We can have a very simple system that is sometimes wrong, sometimes overly optimistic, and then the community system, which obviously provides a lot more detail, goes into hardware specifics, goes into options to include, obviously can suffer from kind of spammy reports which don't really add anything, useless reports, and especially if a lot more people were using it, that would be more of a problem. But most of the time is an incredible resource where you learn how to get a game to actually work, not just know that it doesn't work. Now, I don't see Valve ever actually implementing this system. Maybe they could, but you know, if you don't want to just hold out hope, there is this thing called Decky Loader for loading plugins on the Steam Deck. And with that, you can get Proton DB Decky. This will take the Proton DB scores and integrate them directly into the Steam Deck interface. Look, if Valve's not going to do it, you might as well do it yourself. Now, again, I don't think this is a bad system. In fact, I think it's a good system. I just think there is more that could be done to make it even better. I am really excited to see more handheld devices running Linux, not just SteamOS, whatever they happen to be running. There's one coming up from Zotac that's going to be running Manjaro. You've got the Lenovo Legion Go S, which is running SteamOS. I'm sure there's going to be other devices in the future. This is really cool. We have a whole new class of devices being born, and I'm all for it. So if you liked the video, go like the video. If you really liked the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out my Patreon, subscribe to the Libero page, linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me, and show me your decky.